The Raid on Genonoku. Captain Forth and his group of militiamen traveled along the St. Lawrence River to the town of Genonoku from their base in Ontario. Daybreak had only begun as they went up the river with a group of New York militiamen that were untrained but were there because they needed someone to row the boats. The raid on Genonoku was on the morning of September 21st, 1812 and was the first battle of the War of 1812. When Forth and his men approached the town, Along the St. Lawrence River, they had to be careful because of the several gunboats that were patrolled in the water. However, if the men were spotted, they would have to go to land on one of the several islands along the St. Lawrence River and take cover there. The group of men hit shore at Sheriff's Point, and they pulled their rifles out of their leather cases and spilled out from both sides of their boats. Although two untrained British dragoons spotted the U.S. soldiers coming to shore, they both freaked out and fled. One of them was shot, but the other escaped back to the town. Forths and his riflemen headed along King Road and were approached by a group of 60 or so militiamen under the command of Colonel Joel Stone. Colonel Stone ordered his men to raise their muskets and fire at the group of U.S. riflemen. It was a weak attack considering that only one of the riflemen died and a few were wounded. Now it was Forth's turn and he ordered his men to charge against the soldiers. Because of this sudden attack, Colonel Stone's men had panicked and fled down King's Road, although Captain Forth's men had no mercy and didn't want to take prisoners and kept shooting at the, at the militiamen. The riflemen entered the town and went to Colonel Stone's house. Some of the riflemen recklessly shot stray bullets into the house. Sadly, one of those bullets hit Colonel Stone's elderly wife and caused an injury that would affect her for the rest of her life. The riflemen ransacked Colonel Stone's house, but on their way back they were halted by their officers to not take any personal belongings. There was anxiety regarding the ownership of personal property over the two borders, and that was the reason why the officers told them to put the personal belongings back. Captain Forth and his men gained reputation of plundering as the war continued. In this situation, however, Forth and his men just carried off small arms and some ammunition along with some militia prisoners back to their base. Forth knew that his attack on Genonoku would anger the nearby Kings, Kingston garrison and he could not linger for more than 30 minutes before leaving the town and Kingston garrison indeed did mobilize. As soon as word reached to Kingston garrison about the raid on Genonoku, he deployed a group of militiamen to intercept the attack. This was the first offensive attack on Canadian soil along the St. Lawrence River, but not the last for Captain Forth. It is possible that C Colonel Stone was named at the attack of Ganongoku. Uh, Records are not clear whether he was there due to the fact that two of the top militia officers were absent during the time of the attack.